Today, Precarious Plays... Deus Ex, Mankind Divided. So I've been thinking about other games. I've been thinking, like, what what did I want from Metroid Dread? What did I want from Fire Emblem Three Houses? Mm-hmm. And I, I, like, I wanted them to compare favorably, mechanically, to <laughs> games developed by, you know... One person, ten mm-hmm. people. I don't know. I think Hollow Knight's team was pretty small. I just I wouldn't hold Metroid Dread to this to the standard of Hollow Knight. Do you think that it ends up having the too many chefs problem whenever games get bigger and they're trying to work with more advanced technologies and things like that? I think that so. One of the big problems with Metroid Dread that I have, it is just poor core design. Like, it was money that was not spent appropriately. Mm -hmm. Development resources were not used on the right stuff. Mm -hmm. That's curious. Is there a camera up here? There's a person. Okay, but I should be fine to try... Try like this? Oh. Hmm. Neat. Okay. So can I think of a, a reasonable example? Oh. So, oh, what? Sorry. <laughs> no, I just thought it was going out into the room with the guy, and I thought you just punched through a wall in front of a guy. <laughs> no. Not this time. <laughs> oh, this is quite lovely, actually. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Although, is that camera? The camera's down there. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> so, let me give you an example of one of the things that bothered me about Metroid Dread. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it would have happened in a smaller. And a game that was uh, more focused on being art first and then a product, like a commercial product second, right? Mm-hmm. Too much of Metroid Dread. It felt like it was... It felt like a lot of the difficulty was tuned around a very generous failure state. Mm -hmm. And to me, that says that, like, they wanted to make a really hard game, but they didn't want it to actually be too hard because then people might not buy it once it got like a certain reputation you know Uh it wouldn't okay I thought that that was just air air. (laughs) so like it wouldn't have been able to pull Nintendo numbers if it had been uh as difficult as they wanted as demanding as they wanted some parts of it to be. Yeah. And it's not uh, it is not appropriately designed. The the difficulty is uh nonsensical is one way I might try to describe it. So let me let me say it this way. What is the point of making something really hard, making like a really difficult challenge in a video game, but then making it to where the failure state just drops you seconds before you Wow. Huh. Part of me feels a little 
badly that I like found the vent because mm-hmm. that would have been interesting to try to navigate. On yeah. Fr- what am I talking about? I would have just turned invisible and sprinted through. This is yeah. fine. Um, what am I trying to say? Hold on. Let me let me uh, get a nice little little view. Uh, here. Let me just sit here again for a minute and sort my thoughts. Metroid Dread. I feel like the core of the design, a lot of it is based around, I'm sure that they were going for a sense of dread, which they equated to a difficult game. And it's false, it's fake, it's pretend. And the reason why I say that is because the first time like an Emmy grabs Samus and presumably stabs her in the neck because it's a conservative Nintendo title, a relatively conservative Nintendo title, they don't show it, they black out really quickly. But it's like, where do you go after that? All of the tension is gone, you know, once that happens. Like from the very first time you mess one of those up, it's like, okay, it doesn't really get any worse than that. So then it just becomes aggravating. A boss that can chunk your energy tanks down two or three at a time, which does happen. I know you haven't played as far into the game as I have, but later bosses, they'll just... No matter how many energy tanks you have, like if you've been keeping up with all of the energy tanks that are available, you can still lose to a boss in like six total hits, Mm -hmm. you know? It feels like the only reason why they balanced it that way is because they knew that the penalty would be dropping someone right outside the boss room to try again. In that way, it feels more like Guitar Hero. Yeah. You know, it feels like I need, I demand you to perform this within this particular level of adequate, like you have to, you have to get it at least this right to proceed. Or you start at the beginning of the song. Yeah, or you start right back at the beginning of the song and it's not, (sighs) basically I think that the old ways, the old way where it's like, if you lose, you're going back to the save room that you, rested in most recently, I feel like that kept the the, the designers honest mm-hmm. in a way that this system does not. They can just kind of do whatever because they know that the penalty for failure is always going to be like that that little sting of shame and then a really short trip back into the boss room. Yeah. And I'm not a fan. Not a fan of that. It reminds me of um, Super Meat Boy. Yeah, yeah, you pointed that out, and I was like, wow. But but Super Meat Boy... I mean, it's a platformer, and, well, as every time you die, you start at the beginning of the level, but it can, like, it shows you where you messed up last time. Yeah, and it and it's almost immediate yeah it's immediate it's about repetition it's about learning the dance like there is it's not like the point is not to sit contemplate how to get through the puzzle and get through it as you go it's a lot of times you'll just get hit with something you can hear me i'm about to call down the versalite vault alex and there's nothing that really telegraphs it in a clever way or anything like that you just you like get, have to get a feel for it. Yeah, you have to. Well, it's not even getting a feel for it so much as it is learning what is going to come up. So it's more like you play through the timeline over and over again until you know the steps. I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that just because like, I think that might just come down to the difference in how we play games. Yeah. Because I could analyze a level of Super Meat Boy and understand what was being asked of me before trying it. And then it was just like getting the the the, pers- the specific combination of movements down. Mm-hmm. 
But in your case, yeah, it sounds like it's more just like you you figure out the movements by just trying them all sequentially. Yeah, basically. well, to me, I mean, I know what you're saying, and I'm not saying that that didn't happen at all for me, but most of the time it was more like developing the muscle memory over a certain level, kind of like you learn a song. Mm hmm and uh the i i like uh metroid dread it has flat it is also a platformer but though that's not like the hard part that's not the challenge the challenge is the fighting yeah the combat stuff okay is this the right one Ugh. This is actually kind of giving me a stomach ache. What is this? First off, I hope that this is the right one. I hope I didn't mess something up. I might need to do a Google. You know what? I'll save here. And I'll try to keep that one separate. Okay. What do you mean the right one? Was there a selection of these? Yeah, you can get other key cards and summon other vaults. Hmm. But I think the Versa Life one. Uh oh. Is that is that normal? Is that regular? Did I mess Are something up? Are you gonna mash yourself against the ceiling? I don't think so. Maybe. Probably not. Stop. Oh yeah, it's gonna stop. Okay. Well, that isn't exactly what I wanted it to do. I mean, it's probably fine, though. Janus, can you hear me? Yes. The link is weak, but I can strengthen it. Wait, what are you doing? The data rod contains a seeker program. It's flagging everything it finds on Project Orchid and sending it to me. Wait, wait, that's an audio file. Can I hear it? Hello? Bob, it's Megan. Those Orchid samples you told my new assistant to send to Switzerland? I asked him not to bother you with that. It's okay. I told him he could. But it's just... I've never heard of this guard facility before. A recent acquisition. I'll have to take you there someday. That's not necessary. Listen, the changes we made to the Orchid's CAS enzymes, they're incredibly dangerous. Until we perfect the replacement base fragment, GARM's researchers must keep a neutralizing enzyme on hand. I've read your reports, Megan. I know all about the failures of the CRISPR molecule. I'm even keeping a sample of the neutralizer inside a secure vault in case your research gets corrupted. You are? Trust me, you have nothing to worry about. Thank you. I just wanted to be sure this time. Good night, Bob. Good night, my dear. Megan. Dr. Reed, you seem disappointed. She joined VersaLife shortly before Seraph Industries closed. I assumed you knew. <laughs> I don't suppose you know anything about this facility in Switzerland. Garm, I've been digging into it ever since your ex said the name. It was a geological research center until 2025, when Bell Tower Associates bought it. They didn't list it on their balance sheet when they filed for bankruptcy. Yeah. I guess they also forgot to mention the spec ops unit that went AWOL. I have to get to Garm. What are you thinking? I'm thinking about the augmented mercs who ambushed us in Dubai. If Paige sent them the Orchid. That's everything. Unless they're storing something physical in there. Either way, I suggest you leave soon. With the vault in that position, you should be able to exit through the shaft. Good luck, Mr. Jensen. And please don't forget the data rod when you leave. Okay. Alright. Oh, uh, is that it? Those are really tiny. What? Oh god, I think that... that it, what, man, why is this making me feel so anxious? Good lord. What is it? 
Hold on. Let me explore some other stuff. How close are we to the end of an episode? We are at the end of an episode right now. Okay, well, hold on. Let me... Is this the button? Yeah. Okay, so there's the code for computer. Uh. Oh, God. I hate this. Oh, my God. What? That was a face. It was a face. Ooh. Were Ugh. you stored like this at some point? Is that you? Is that a copy of your face? Can you tell? Is It, it, it is looks a, like... The it facial looks hair like is you. really distinct, isn't it? It really is. It looks like an extra copy of yourself. Well, I'm glad you caught on to it so quickly and said it so I didn't have to. I thought it was going to be... The screenshots made it look really unclear. I, it's like, I don't want to zoom in for a closer look. Why do they I'm have gonna... extras of you? Uh, so that is probably the Adam Jensen from Human Revolution. Okay. And, That's fine. And he's just... In a tote. And he just fits in there. Well, we already know that his knees collapse into his chest. But... I wonder if these are also... I mean, these are all, like, foiled. So they they definitely put this here to be found. Yeah. And it's hard to see here, but, yeah, you can see, like... Oh, no. So you, the, the... The ports on your chest. The arms, the arms have been removed. Like, this Jensen seems to have inherited the Augs from that one. That's the prevailing theory. Now, I would point out that there's also an equally sinister solution, you know, which is, I think, similarly valid, which is that there's just... Uh, Adam's youth is a big mystery in the franchise. Yeah. Uh, across across the, the games and the extended media. Mm-hmm. There could have always been a number of atoms running around that we just, we only saw the viewpoint of one or possibly two of them. Mm-hmm. I think that this information might be about Adam as well. Neuroprazine may no longer be needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's an Adam thing. What's the title of it? AJ09. Yeah, Adam Jensen. That's the one. 2009's Adam Jensen, or no, 2020? No, the ninth Adam Jensen. <laughs> Possibly. Possibly, it's, we might never know, because, you know, the, I, the franchise might have been put on ice. Sorry, <laughs> too I, soon. I... Uh, but that, the the prevailing theory is that the reason why, like, the Panchea decision doesn't really matter, why it's not exactly respected between the two games, yeah, is because the Adam and... Human Revolution died there. He died in Panchea, and we're playing as a different Adam. Um, I don't think that that's necessarily true, just because... Nice! I don't think that that's necessarily true, just because... Uh, I... From what I understand, this game wasn't going to feature Adam Jensen at all. The the designers, the the writers are are kind of making it up. They're playing it by ear. They probably have some objectives in mind. Uh and this might just be their way of maintaining a certain level of creative control because it's like, ha. Corporate made us include Adam, but it's not the Adam that they thought it was. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I have to digest this for a little hey. bit. Hey! Janus, can you hear me? 
I think I found that neutralizing enzyme Megan and Paige were talking about. We don't have a lot of time, Mr. Jensen. We'll lose contact. No problem, I got this one. I might be able to save a life or two with this, if the orchid shows up again. Okay, I found something interesting. And he said, don't leave the data rot. Was that... Was that just for flavor? Did Is that the thing that Adam picked up as he... As he left? I think so. Oh. Autocomplete, please. <laughs> okay, I'll pick through this between the episodes. I'll give you a minute. I don't know what to do now. Well, I don't... Uh, we'll talk about it in the next episode. I don't think it's actually that big of a deal.